So creating particles is one thing, but in the end, it's about the final result. And I'm here to teach you how. Let's have a look. Hey, what's up everybody? My name is Aldin Dauti and I'm a senior effects artist working at Filmgate Visual Effects in Sweden. And welcome back to the second part of creating Hollywood magical effects inside of Houdini. So now this tutorial got delayed unfortunately due to had lots of projects going on at Filmgate. So I have to prioritize those projects first before I can do any type of tutorial. But now we're back, let's continue on where we left off with the part one. So for those of you who actually missed out part one, you can actually follow that in the link in the description, or you can just follow the thumbnail here or here somewhere. We'll see where we put it, but just follow the part one and we can continue on where we left off. Now for this part, we're going to focus on how to render the particles, but the key here is to make the particles smooth, illuminated, but also very efficient in the render times when you're in production or working on your own projects. So let's not waste our time here and jump right into Houdini and make some magic. All right, now that we're back in Houdini, let's start off with preparing the scene before we do anything. So now let's create a camera because today we're going to work with rendering. And also let's switch around and create an area light. We might need it, but not necessarily for this particular effect, but worst case scenario. Now let's go to the output and create a mantra node because today we're going to render things with mantra. And now let's add some motion blur. And let us also scroll down to add some alpha channel paths so we can look at the particles, how they look when they are rendered. Now we're all set here. Here is the main topic that we're going to cover throughout the tutorial. Now, as you can see these steps, the base part is already done from the previous tutorial, which is actually creating the particles getting advected by Pyrosolver. And the alpha channel will not be needed, but it will be added as a visual representation when we work with the particles. And the P scale, that is the particle scale, is going to play the same role as the alpha channel, but we're just trying to have a different workflow to have a visual representation in the viewport and on the rendering. And the final part is the light mask, which is not a visual representation in the viewport, but it's going to be a light mask for the actual shader in the render output. And that will be connected to the material. The first thing I prefer to do always is to give the particles some colors. So let's create an attribute and name it color. Now, one thing we're going to depend on all attributes is the input from the particle age. So connect the particle age to a ramp attribute and connect it to the diffuse color. So now let's make a copy of the same attribute and just rename them. Let's call this one alpha. Another copy here for P scale. And the final one should be called light for the light mask. For the color node, we're going to use ramp colors. And for the other attributes, we're going to use spline ramp to control the values. So for the colors, I tend to use magma colors and just flip them around and have the brighter parts at the beginning of the particles when they are born. And uh, before they die, they get darker and darker. So otherwise, it's pretty much in your hands, whatever your desired look is, and just play around with the colors and have fun with it. Now, once you're done with the colors, let's make an output for the alpha channel. So let's jump right in, create a bind export and connect it and go to the ramp parameter and make the ramp to spline ramp and on the bind export, write alpha. And the particles are invincible. That's because we need some values to the ramp. Let's increase the ramp value to one at the end. And as you can see now, the particles are now a little bit invincible at the start and have a smooth transition to a full opacity as the age goes on. And from here, I like to make the particles fade out smooth because this way they kind of look like they're dissipating smoothly rather than popping out or popping in once they get born. This is my style of working with particles to fade in and fade out and you get this more organic look to it. Now, this is just a visual representation of what I trying to aim to do with a particle scale instead for the alpha channel. So we do the same thing with the particle scale, 
but rather than alpha channel, we do it with a particle size instead. So here I tend to do the same thing like the alpha channel with a bind export, change the ramp to a spline ramp. And on the output, we write P scale for the particle scale. And here we do the same thing with a ramp, just like the alpha channel with zero values at start and at the end, but we have a certain value in the middle of it. And for this part, it's the particle size. Now here I tend to make the particle size very small because the key here is to make it as smooth as possible. And the more particles you have, the more dense it's gonna get. And you want to make the particle size even smaller, the more you add to the scene. And that way you can make things to look very smooth. And once we're done here, let's have a look at the rendering of the particles. Now, just a quick break here. If you're interested of the project file itself, you can find it at Dyson's Patreon page. And there's a lot of great stuff there to check out and even assets that actually can provide you to be more efficient in production or your own project that you're working on. Now, if you have any further questions or wish to communicate, you can also check out Dyson's Discord channel. Link in the description. And there we go. Now we have some particles showing up in the render. Now let's increase the resolution a little bit in the camera. All right, you don't have to do this, but I'm gonna increase it twice as big and see it a little bit more clear. So now I'm just gonna demonstrate a little bit here so you don't have to follow along this part, but I'm increasing the particle size just to show you the rendering. And we do have particles here, it's pretty clear. And I'm even gonna take out the motion blur just to show you the particles without the blur itself. And we do have particles in the render, but not as clearly as I wish. But in the alpha channel, we see them quite clear. So the question comes down to how can we make the particles more visible in the actual render? So going back to the original size of the particles and what we need right now is a material for the particles. Now let's call this particle shader and let's do some adjustments here. Let's change the base color to a white color and the index of refraction to one roughness to zero and reflection to zero. And let's apply the shader. Reason for these changes is because we don't need any reflection of the particles and they won't be visible to the actual look we're going after. And if we look at the render right now, we have the particles brighter but still not quite there yet. And now comes the reason I don't use the alpha channel from the VOP attribute because I want to use the alpha opacity in the shader. So let's lower it to 0.01. Now let's have a look at the render. Maybe too much, let's increase it to 0.1. And there we go, now we have something going on here. And if we look at the alpha, you have this transparent wispy look to it right now. So with the particles transparent, we want to brighten them up with emission. So make the emission color to white and let's have a look at the render. And the particles are very bright. So let's uncheck illuminates objects and let's decrease the emission intensity. Slightly better, but also apply our diffuse color. And there we go. Now we have the particles illuminated with our diffuse color on top of it. Now let's compare this to the previous render. Now you can clearly see that there is a more illumination going on with the denser area of the particles. So now let's spice it up a little bit and let's increase the particle amount to 5 million particles. And just like that, we have some beautiful, gorgeous looking illuminated magical particles pushing the boundaries the more we add to it. And the best part about this technique is that this only took 10 seconds to render on a 4K resolution, which is really efficient when you're working in production. Now, before we go to the next step, I want to do some adjustments here and what I want to do is to slow down the particles even more with a read time node. This part is mostly optional, but it's a post process we're doing right now without having to re-simulate the particles in the pyrosolver. 
So what I want to do right now is to slow down the particles to half of the speed and make sure also to use the subdivision for the samples in between the frames as we slow down everything. Now the velocities need to also slow down as well and we can solve that by just clicking the scale velocities so we can maintain the same speed as we have slowed down the particles. So that should just solve the problems otherwise we have too much motion blur going on with a different speed to the particles. And I'm gonna make a flip book here so we can check how the particles look with and without alpha. And I think this looks quite well actually, but it all depends on your project you're working on. But for this tutorial, this is the speed and the motions I'm going after. So now we have come this far, I want to demonstrate to you guys something by zooming into the scene a little bit more so we can render the particles on a close up. And as I expected, things are rendering fast and it looks nice, but there's one thing I forgot to add. It's the motion blur. And just like that, we have the particles even more smoothened out with the motion blur on top of it. A perfect opportunity for me to demonstrate on a close-up render. So the final part now is to create the light mask and it's an optional thing but I think this might be very useful if we want to play around with the illumination of the particles. So create a bind export and let's write in the output emit int. What this is doing is linking the emission intensity from the particle shader that we dial down to 0.3. So instead of controlling things in the particle shader, we're controlling everything in the light mask VOP operator. So we follow the same step, we're creating a spline ramp and just controlling things with the age of the particles. So for this demonstration, I'm using zero values at the start and more values at the end of the particle age. Now, as you can see, we have decreased the intensity at the start of the particles. And if we compare that to the previous one, you have that more orangey glowy look to it. So basically right now you're just having the control when you want things to get illuminated or not. And right now we're just using the particle age. So right now all I'm doing is just playing around with a ramp parameter with a particle age. But basically you can use also the velocity of the particles as the input instead of particle age. Like if the particles are moving faster to a certain area, you can have them illuminated and the less they move, the less intensity or illumination they'll receive. So you have basically any type of control when things should be illuminated or not. And not just illumination, but the particle scale and the alpha channel and all those attributes. So now just have fun, play around with the colors and work around with the attributes and make some particle magic. Now we have come to the end of the particle magic tutorial. If you have any further questions, just please leave a comment. All right, that's the end. And I hope you have learned a lot of things here because there's a lot more to discover. But who knows what I might come up with next time. But until then, have a good one.